Hallelujah. I hope you had a wonderful week this past week with the Lord. Amen. And you worship Him and you honored Him in all that you did. That's what the message was last week that He wanted me to bring forth to the body of Christ. And I pray that you're doing that. No matter what you're doing, whether you're at school, in class, whether you're at work, whether you're doing some medial task out in the yard or in the house, that you're worshiping Him and honoring Him in all you do, including, you know, with things that you wouldn't really think about, you know, intimate times with your spouse or just mundane things of life. Worship and honor him in all you do. That's what the message was last week. If you missed it, I would encourage you to go back and uh, check it out on our YouTube channel or our Rumble channel. If you're new to this ministry, thank you. I'm glad you found us. Welcome here. Um, we're happy to have you here. Each and every week I come forth with a live message, usually on Saturday. At 9 a.m. Central Time, sometimes I am um, can't do that, but uh, normally it's live. So either way, um, you can be blessed by it because the anointing, the Holy Spirit is still going to be on it. Amen and amen. So if uh, you found us on Rumble, which more and more people are, um, and YouTube, surprisingly, uh, but mainly Rumble, um, there's notes for you on our church website. If you want to jump over there and watch it, if you, if you see that I'm live streaming there, um, go to Thy Kingdom Come Church of Jesus Christ dot online dot church, and that's a mouthful. Sorry, um, our website's easier. You may want to just go there. It's TKCC of Jesus Christ, and then click on the uh, button that says um, Live Church. I think it says there's a tab up there. You can click on it um, because there's notes for you there. There's a chat room you can jump into and talk to brothers and sisters in the Lord. Not many people do, but that's all right. Um, you can jump in there, ask for prayer, put up your testimony, because there's power in your testimony. Revelation 12, 11 says this, They overcame him, who was Satan, or the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And there's power in your testimony. If the Lord's healed you, if he's delivered you, if he's blessed you by healing your broken heart, share that with people. There's power behind that. The Holy Spirit did that. The Lord did that. And there's power. And that you may just touch another person of the Lord through your testimony. Amen. And it re-edifies in yourself what the Lord did for you. It's a good way to stay overcoming of the enemy. So, anyway, there's notes for you there. There's a chat room. There's also um, the order of the service today. And so, real quickly here, I'll open up with a prayer here shortly. And then I'll have some praise music for you to Praise the Lord and honor Him and get into His presence a little easier maybe. Um, go before Him at that time and confess your sins to Him if you had any this week. Hopefully you didn't. You know, just because you're tempted doesn't mean you sin. And um, then um, I will bring forth the teaching. We'll have communion, so gather your communion supplies up now. Uh, water, wine, juice, bread. I'll have some more praise music, and then I'll have a prayer at the end of the service, an active prayer, a Holy Spirit-led prayer. Um, last week it was a... a we just worshiped him. And, uh, you know, as I worshiped him, the 
Holy Spirit started speaking uh, through tongues. So, you know, whenever you're worshiping and seeking and pressing into the Lord, that's, you know, if you have trouble speaking in tongues you're, in your prayer language, that may be a way for you to um, have that come forth in you. Amen? Because it's in there somewhere. <laughs> it's just a matter of drawing into Him and, and uh, getting in the Spirit and uh, obviously reading the Word, praying, praising Him, worshiping Him at all times helps you to move in that area. So, um, anyway, it could be an edification prayer, could be a, a deliverance prayer, could be a healing prayer, could be an intercessory prayer that the Holy Spirit has me do at the end of the service. But in, in, any way um, He moves, um, I try to just get out of the way and let Him do it because I only want Him moving through me. And each and every week I go before the Lord to bring forth this message to you. I'm very excited to bring this message to you today. Um, it is a prophetic word for the church, I believe, and other men and women. What's interesting about this word that he gave me, other men and uh, especially men of God right now, uh, prophets, are, are saying the same thing. And, and what's interesting about this is, you know, each and every week I gather in prayer with several pastors um, across the globe, actually, and at different times through Skype, through, you know, FaceTime, through whatever we meet and we pray together. And... This prayer, the, the word the Lord is giving to the church today, Arise, O Church, um, is a prayer that I've been praying for years. And, and I think this is, it's coming forth now. And it's time for the body of Christ to take position and rule and reign on the earth. Now, what does that mean? Well, we're going to get into that. And it, it, basically what it means, it's allowing Jesus, his government, to reign through us in all positions of society, because what's happened over the last, I'm already into the service, I'm already preaching, uh, what's happened over the last hundreds of years, I would say, is the church, probably because of deception of the enemy, has allowed the devil to still be in position, reigning through people, when he lost all authority at the cross. So we're going to go over this today, and I'm excited to deliver this to you, and I hope it stirs something in you. And if the Lord has called you into a place of leadership, then it's time to move. Um, if you know of someone that's called into leadership, maybe you need to get them to watch this message. I don't know. But uh, be in prayer. So I'm going to open up with prayer now, prayer now and uh, just prepare to receive what the Lord has for the body of Christ today. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. All blessing and honor are yours, Father God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our Father. Abba, Father, you gave us life. Thank you. Thank you for breathing life into us in the womb of our uh, mothers as we were uh, conceived. Thank you for giving us life, bringing us to this earth, Lord, to um, fulfill our role for you. We are all called as, as believers in Christ to be your ambassadors, to represent you. Lord, help us to fulfill that, Lord. I ask for help personally, and I ask for every believer out here today for help for them, Lord, to um, fulfill their destiny to fulfill the call as an ambassador of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of us, and the Lord and Savior of the world for all who would receive him. Lord, help us to sow. Help us to harvest. Lord, Jesus said in your word, look up that the fields are ripe for harvest and pray to the Lord of the harvest to send in laborers into the field, Lord. So I pray for all the laborers who are already in the field this morning. I pray for them to be renewed, strengthened, Lord, Give them the words to speak to the lost, Father God, in Jesus' name, so that they would receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We magnify you. We glorify you today, Jesus, our King and Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lord, help us to yield all of our spirit, soul, flesh, and mind to you each and every day, Jesus, allowing you to rule and reign through us, Lord. Help us to get out of the way. Help us to be your bondservant, as you've called us to do, and to to um, bear your cross each and every day. Help us to lay down our life for you, Jesus. The, the world tries to pull us each and every way, Father God. And I just ask for help for the body of Christ, Lord, to stay steadfast, anchored to you, and to fulfill our calling. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father God, I pull down every veil, every scale, every blinder off anybody out here today or in the future who would hear this message I pull it down now, I pull it down now, I pull it down now off their mind, heart, and soul, their eyes, so that they would receive this, Lord, and it would grow root in them, and they would arise as you've called them into position in some area in society. Maybe it's just serving in a soup kitchen, 
soup kitchen and not being in the pulpit and preaching a word. Well, I know you can work through, <laughs> through the marketplace probably easier than in the pulpit sometimes. So, Father God, I pray each and everybody out here would receive their calling no matter what it is, Father God, and do it in honor of you. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray you just fill me with the Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost fire and each and every believer out here today. Refill us, O oh Lord. Refill us with your power, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Well, let's praise the Lord with some psalms here. I'm going to bring forth Psalm 23 and then uh, Psalm 4. What's interesting about that last uh, psalm I just was praying there at the intro, um, you know, he was talking about ruling, wasn't it, over the nations? And he wants to do that through us, the believers. Amen. So I'm going to bring forth these psalms, and I'll be back with this message for you today. I'm so excited to bring this forth to you and uh, prepare your hearts to receive. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not
Thank you, Jetta. I apologize. <laughs> so I just went on and on and uh, was muted. Uh, next time that happens, Anne, just yell at me. <laughs> so I'm going to start all over. I apologize. So this is what the word of the Lord gave me. Now I'm not muted, correct? You can hear me now, correct? Uh, okay, let's, well, now you should be able to hear me. Check, check, radio check. Can you hear me now? Jetta, can you hear me? Because it says my microphone is on. Um, you still don't hear me. Well, the uh, microphone is on. It says, um, yes what, Jetta? Yes, I'm muted or yes, you can hear me? Give me a, uh, give me something in the chat there because it says the microphone is on and uh, I, I see yes, yes, yes. What does that mean? Yes, I'm muted or yes, you can hear me. <laughs> can hear. Okay. Okay. Refresh your computer and maybe that's why you can't hear me. Thank you, Jetta. All right. So I'm going to start over. I apologize. Um, this is what I heard from the Lord. Rise up, you sleepers, you barren ones. It is time to give birth. Your time of slumber is over. It is time. It is your time to rise and take your position. Take the position I've called you to. Positions of leadership, power, and authority. Do not delay any longer. Do not be afraid, for I am with you and have called you for such a time as this. Leaders in government, education, finance, arts and entertainment, religion, family, media, which is communications. Rule and reign upon the earth through me. It is time for my government to reign through my saints. Do not delay. Step out in faith and trust me. This is what I heard from the Lord. So, Isaiah 54, 1 says this, Sing, O barren, you who have not born. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your strakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left. And your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife when you were refused, says our God. So, this Scripture somewhat parallels what I was talking about. The Lord has called the body of Christ to rule and reign all facets of society. What's happened over the last several centuries is when God defeated Satan at the cross, he did more than just took all of our sins. He reclaimed authority for his people that was lost in the garden. We're going to go over this today. And it's time for us for men and women of God to rule and reign. Okay? All facets of society. Because if not, who's going to rule and reign? The devil's still sitting on these mountains right now. But it's time. There's other men of, men of God who've been saying this too. And I think I already spoke this. Hopefully it wasn't when I was muted. I've been praying for some time with other men of God. And they're getting the same thing. It's time for us to rise. Lengthen our, lengthen our, uh, lengthen and stretch out. Take over areas for Christ. If not, who's going to do it? The devil is through another person that's not of God. Genesis 1.26, And God said, I'm going to go through this quickly because I was muted for whatever five minutes. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over all living things that moves on the earth. So God gave dominion over the earth to Adam and Eve. Okay? He gave them dominion over it all. Genesis 2.9 And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was there. Jumping down to verse 15, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. He gave him dominion over it, to take care of it, 
And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Oh, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in that day you eat it, you shall surely die. Now, he did not die in the physical sense. He died in the spiritual sense, okay? And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground the Lord came, God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. Dominion. He gave Adam dominion, even to name the animals. God didn't name them, Adam did. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and every beast of the field. Jumping into Genesis 3.13. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? So Eve was tempted by the serpent. She bit of the fruit of the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil. Thus they died spiritually to the Lord. Because then he followed after her and took of the fruit that she ate. The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed from all you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. And on your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. If, you're, if your husband is not ruling over you, by the way, things are flip-flop spiritually in your household. Then Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake, in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field, and the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return." And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever, therefore the Lord God sent him out of the Garden of Eden, he lost dominion, to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword was turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. So because of Adam and Eve's fall, they lost some authority. They lost some dominion. When Jesus came, he took it back for us, for all who are in him, who believe in him. It's for the people of God. He restored it. Okay? Matthew 4, 1, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. So this is after Jesus got baptized. For you who may not know the scriptures well, Jesus got baptized by John the Baptist. The Holy Spirit came upon him and drove him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. And on the final temptation in the book of Matthew, it says this. It was, the final temptation was for the kingdoms of the earth. Because you see, there's kingdoms on this earth. And these kingdoms, I believe, are these things that the Lord just spoke. There's kingdoms of government, there's kingdoms of finance, there's kingdoms of education, there's kingdoms of, of religion, there's kingdoms of family, there's kingdoms of, of media and communications, okay? And the devil wants to rule and reign those kingdoms so that he can put his evil out there to the world. Verse 8, again the devil took Jesus up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. A lot of people when they read this, they think kingdoms, well these are nations, these are different you know, it's, it's Africa, it's Australia, so to speak, it, it's, it's Kenya, it's Sudan, it's, it's, you know, Great Britain, it's Japan. Maybe it was, but I think it was more than that. I think he was showing him spiritual kingdoms that he had authority over at the time because of the fall in the garden. And he said to, the, he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Because what does Satan do right now? He gives people positions of power when they worship him, when they fall down and make him their God. I mean, it's obvious to see in the entertainment industry, is it not? Is it not obvious to see this right now in the education system of the world? Look at what's being taught to the children in schools. Is it not obvious to see it in the political realm? Look what they're doing in this country especially, how they've approved, you know, Union of same sexes, of marriage, how they've approved, our, I'm talking politics now, the government, 
how they've approved pushing this LGBTQ agenda, which is not of God. It's obvious to see that he has been ruling these kingdoms, and he, it was taken. I'm telling you, Jesus took it back. And it's time for the men and women of God to rise up in these positions to rule and reign. God can reign through you and I. Does that make sense? Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. In Luke 4, verse 5, the same thing happens. The devil taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me. And I give it to whomever I wish. Did you hear that? Satan knew that he took it. When Adam and Eve sinned, he had authority at that time then. Until Christ came. And he took it all back on the cross. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours, Satan said to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. It's time for the saints to rule and reign. Now, that doesn't mean we're doing it on our own. We're doing it through Christ. Through Christ ruling and reigning through us. Through the Father God ruling and reigning through us. Because we're in Him. We're in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We're in Jesus. We're in the Father. Amen? Isaiah 9, 6 says this, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government... The government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Think about it. If the men and women of God were in positions of leadership across the globe, would there be peace in the world? Would there be wars? I don't think there would be. Because what's one of the fruits of the Spirit? Peace. So if you have leaders in all across the globe, of every nation, that are Christians... Wouldn't peace reign on the earth? Hello? Reigning through us? Jesus reigning through us? There be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of the hosts will perform this. Matthew eleven twenty seven, English Standard Version says this, All things have been handed over to me, Jesus said, by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. We are his ambassadors. We are in Christ. All authority has been given to him. Thus, he's, he's wanting to use us to move forward on this earth. He could do it from heaven, obviously. He, he rules and reigns over all the earth, the scriptures say. Right? But he partners with mankind, his greatest creation. Matthew 16, 15. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven revealed it to Peter. And I also say to you, to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell, the gates of Hades, should not prevail against the body of Christ. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Excuse me, Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. We are in Christ. Authority has been given to us. He wants to rule and reign through his body. In society. You know, many in the church, the bride of Christ... Just to worry about salvation, and that's it. He came for much more than that. He took the keys back from the devil. Revelation 1.18, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and I have the keys of Hades and of death. The devil had taken dominion over the earth and authority because of what was lost, and Jesus took it all back. But yet the, bar, the bride, the body of Christ... We haven't operated in that authority in society, so to speak. Does this make sense to you? He's calling the body of Christ to rise up, stretch out, take dominion. Now, this is not an authority. It's not a, uh, a um, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's not a, a dominion or a thing where we, we are 
pushing Christianity down people's throats. It's not like the Crusades, where in the name of Christianity, wars took place. It's us having authority and ruling and reigning through leadership bring the peace of Christ to society, bring the love of Christ to society. That's who he is, is love, right? But he needs you and I and all the men and women of God to rise up and not just worry about saving souls alone. Yes, we are to do that and make disciples of all nations, but we are also to be in position of society and influence. If not, who's going to do it? The devil's going to do it through people that aren't born again. You know, the biggest, one of the biggest fallacies, I think, in the body of Christ is, oh, Jesus, come. Take us out of here. Take us out of here. Take us out of here. Come, Jesus, come. No, rule and reign. Be his ambassador. Get on the city council. Get on, become a county commissioner. If the Lord tells you, if he's pushing you to move into government, if the Lord's telling you to pick up the guitar and sing for his glory, instead of a child listening to demonic music, he wants to use you. Does that make sense? If you're called to be an educator, a teacher, to influence children and bring forth knowledge to them, if you're not going to do it, here you got somebody over here who's bound by the enemy, bringing drag queens in the library. Hello? Are you with me? Isaiah 22, 22, the key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulder, so he shall open. So... He shall open and no one shall shut, and he shall shut and no one shall open. The Lord is calling the body of Christ to move forward in this area and rule and reign. Revelation 3, 6. He who has an ear, let him hear what the scripture says to the churches and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Right, these things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. This is showing us right here that once I said Christ took all authority from the enemy back. He had authority over kingdoms of the earth, kingdoms of society, kingdoms of influence, kingdoms of politics. And he will still hold those positions unless the body of Christ rises up and moves into those positions. I read an interesting little book just recently about a man of God who was called back to his hometown in Texas to start a church. And when he left this hometown, there was churches everywhere. It was a Christian-filled community. When he came back, it was not. Prostitution had, had grown rampant. Alcoholism, drugs, uh, 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 gangs had, had come in. And the churches had sold their buildings to other religions. And the guy was very distraught. And so he started seeking the Lord as far as how this happened. And what happened was this. The men of God and women of God who were in leadership in the body of Christ started sinning. Started walking in with the devil. Started getting into drunkenness, prostitution. They left their positions. Because you see, there's mountains. Whenever Jesus went... If, if we look at Scripture, I don't have time to go through all of this. Meat, this is meat. Where did people go to meet God? They went to the mountain, did they not? Jesus went to the mountain and prayed. Moses went to the mountain and met him. Noah, whenever the flood came, where did the boat land? On a mountain. Abraham went up to sacrifice his son in a high place. And there's mountains of influence, these mountains of society, if you want to call them that, government, education, family, religion, economy, media, arts and entertainment. We, the body of Christ, need to rule and reign on those mountains. And even back to my story, this man, when he came back, the Lord started showing him, similarly to what I'm talking about, God had withdrawn from that city because of the people of God turning themselves over to the enemy. And what came in, he seen a huge dragon over the city, probably a principality power, on a mountain, so to speak, breathing fire out over the city and he got close enough the lord showed him in a vision he got close enough to the fire and what the fire was was words of corruption of prostitution of of hatred of parents of just all this stuff that was being spewed out over the city because the men and women of god left their position 
Colossians 2.15, having disarmed principalities and powers. Did you hear that? He disarmed them at the cross. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Yes, he came to take the sin away from mankind and save us from our sins. Yes, he did that. Yes, he came that we can have a more abundant life, that he can heal our broken hearts, he can deliver us personally. But he's also done more. On that cross, he took dominion for the body of Christ to rule and reign through him on earth. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Revelations 1.4 John and the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. I didn't have time, but you know there's more in the book. The book, the book of Revelation is about the revelation of Jesus Christ and who he is. And these seven spirits go out into all the earth, it says in there. Did you know that? These seven spirits go out into all the earth. There's seven kingdoms that were named by other men of God, and that the Lord dropped in me to give to you this week those seven things I named, those seven kingdoms. He wants you to be used by him. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you a little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will also live. At that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. You are in the Father. You are in Christ right now because you have the Holy Spirit. Amen? But what about the world? The world cannot receive it. It says right there, The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. Well, wouldn't it? world be able to see and know Christ much easier if the men and women of God were at the in in positions of leadership, positions of influence. If the men and women of God were sitting in the media bringing forth the truth news, or if the men and women of God were in arts and entertainment bringing forth godly principles, are you with me, for a movie to watch, for music to listen to? Hello, are you with me here? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that change the world? Wouldn't that change people's hearts? Submit yourselves therefore to God, James 4, 7. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist him in all our heart, mind, and soul at all times so that he can use us as his ambassador. Revelation is about out of time. Revelation 12, 10. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power, you hear that? Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they love not their lives even unto the death. Christ took back authority and dominion at the cross from the enemy's camp. He was given to it through the fall of Adam and Eve. But it's now been relinquished, relinquished back to Christ, back to the believers. Amen. And it's time for you and I and all men and women of God to rise up in positions in society to let Christ's love rule and reign through us. If we don't do it, who's going to do it? You know, another a big lie that's been in the body of Christ is, oh, you can't get involved in politics. Okay, well, if you don't, the enemy's going to. And that's what's happened. Are you with me? Does this make sense to you? I hope it does. There's other men of God that have, have got this revelation. And I don't think it's any coincidence that the Lord has had me and other men of God and my wife and other believers praying, other women too, praying for years now. For the Lord to put in people in position of leadership. Has he called you into leadership? 
Maybe he's called you as an intercessor. Maybe your gift is intercessory, and you don't even realize how much power you have with those intercessory prayers, by the way. They're mighty. In fact, intercessors are probably some of the most powerful people in the body of Christ. They don't even realize it. Start, if the Lord's pushing you to pray for leaders to be put into position, be praying it and decreeing, declaring that it is going to be done. Amen? I pray this spoke to you today. It's time for the church to arise, rise up of, out of our... Right, it said, he said, rise up, O you sleepers, you barren ones. It is time. You hear that? It is time. It is your time to rise and take your position. Take the position I've called you to, positions of leadership, power, and authority. Do not delay any longer. Do not be afraid, for I am with you and have called you for such a time as this. Leaders in government, education, finance, arts and entertainment, religion, family, media which is communications. Rule and reign upon the earth through me, he said. It is time for my government to reign through my saints. Do not delay. Step out in faith and trust me. God works with mankind. He gives us free will, right? It's time for us, you, the body of Christ, to move into leadership positions and allow him to rule and reign through you. Amen? I pray this spoke to you. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, after today, I pray you'd accept him. He loves you. He died on the cross for you. And your Father in heaven loves you immensely. So much that he sent his only son to die for your sins. And they are forgiven once you receive him as far as the east to the west. You're washed as white as snow. All you have to do is believe that Jesus Christ came for you. And Jesus Christ, before he went to that cross, he took some bread. I'm going to take communion now, so gather your supplies. I bless them right now in the body, of, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Every cup becomes a blood, and every piece of bread becomes a body. At that Passover meal, he met with his disciples, and he took some bread, and he took, broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So take, eat of the precious body of Jesus, remembering that he died a horrible, wretched death for your sins and mine's. And by his stripes on that cross, we are healed. Thank you, Jesus. And when the separated in, he took a cup and he said, This is the blood of the new and everlasting covenant shed for the remission of sins. Through Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross, We've been washed white as snow, so take drink of the precious blood of Jesus. Well, let's praise the Lord with some psalm music, 103 and 106, and I'll be back with prayer for you. Prepare to receive from your heart. And uh, always go before the Lord. If this stirred in you, great. If it's resonating with the Holy Spirit within you, great. If you're kind of pondering and wondering, I don't know about this. Pray. Ask the Lord if this word is from Him. Always test the Spirit.
because I got to get to this prayer for you. So the Lord wants me to release you into your destiny of leadership, into your calling, into your true calling, to rule and reign on earth, allowing him to rule and reign through you is a better term, okay? So just receive from the Holy Spirit, receive from the Lord. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father God, thank you, Holy Spirit. I cut off, in Jesus' name, the snares, the blockades, the barricades, the traps, the chains that have kept you from moving forward into your call. Right now, I loose you from that in Jesus' name. I break the bonds off of you that have kept you from moving forward, and I release you into your destiny by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Be released into the kingdoms of authority. Be released onto the mountains, onto the hills. In Jesus' name of society, be released, O body of Christ. Be released in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, to rule and reign upon the earth through our Father God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, through Jesus Christ, allowing his government to reign and rule through you. In Jesus' name, be released into your destiny now, into the mountain of society that God has called you to. I loose you from the enemy's camp. I loose you from the snares of the devil. I loose you from everything that's hindered you from moving forward into the area of influence for Christ's sake, for the kingdom of God's sake, for his desire. 
to fill the earth with his love, joy, and peace. In Jesus' name, be released into your destiny now. Holy Spirit, I ask you to show them, Father God. I ask you to show them, Father God, what their area is that you desire to use them in. To have influence over the enemy's camp, Father God. He is, de- he is uh, defeated. He is defeated. So, Father God, I ask the Holy Spirit to show the brothers and sisters of the Lord where they, uh, where the, where they are to operate, in what area of these things I named earlier today, and in what facet, Father God. Maybe it's going into the public library so that the drag queens can't come in anymore. Maybe it's something, who knows? Maybe it's in the soup kitchen. Maybe it's in the bank, banking world. You know, I don't know, but Holy Spirit, show them. Show them, Father God, show them. In Jesus' name, continue to seek the Lord on that. If he hasn't shown you already, if he's already shown you where you're supposed to be moving, then start enlarging your tent. Enlarging your tent pegs. Taking more ground for the Lord. Allowing Him to rule and reign through you. In love. In grace. In mercy. In the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me here today. I pray that message was was speaking to your heart. Um, it's, it's time. The Lord would have put that out. And he's put it out with other people. Get this. There's another man of God. Well, I don't even have time to go over it. He was putting out a prophetic word about taking back the LGBTQ, and he was talking about the rainbow, and the rainbow is the seven spirits of God. The rainbow has seven colors. It all lines up. There's a deep teaching on this that a, pat, a prophet put out that just woke me up and many other men and women of God. So I want to pray, pray a blessing over you if this ministry has blessed you. If you consider sending us a, a love offering or a financial gift, we'd appreciate it. We do have expenses to run this ministry. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, shalom, in Yeshua's name, Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Pray for uh, Kenya, the country of Kenya. They've had flooding there, civil unrest. Um, pray for Pastor Enosh in India. Did I say India? I meant Africa. Kenya, Africa. Pray for Pastor Enos, one of the ministries we support in uh, in India. He's getting ready to open up a uh, a church in South Africa. So pray for that to go well. Uh, and they are having uh, their one year anniversary celebration for their new uh, worship center they opened up the 26th and 27th, I believe, of May. I don't think it was this month. Um, pray for that and pray for um, him to be able to come back to the states in July. So those are some prayer points. Pray for Elizabeth, the little girl who has amoebas that have inf- infected her. She's eight years old, one of the orphans in, uh, in Africa. Pray for Elizabeth to be healed of that infection. Um, so anyway, those are some prayer points you can pray. And pray for Anna and I, please. Pray for me. Um, I'm going to be bringing forth some other things, I feel like, in the near future. Some, uh, hopefully some other times I can come on here and uh, pray some prayers for healing. So anyway, God bless you. Pray for the Lord to reveal the vision he has for me fully. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week. I'll be back. I'll be back next week. God bless you all. I love you.